Hey, good morning, church. How we doing today? Were you filled and blessed during our time of worship like I was? Man, I was just sitting over there just uh, thanking God for how good he is and how awesome it is to get together with the body of Christ to worship his name. Hey, uh, I got a friend standing next to me this morning, and uh, his name is Brayden. And uh, the reason that he's up here today is because I was reminded this morning that, that there are times that we pray for things, God answers those prayers, and then we kind of just don't stop to, to remember and to praise him for his faithfulness. Have you ever done that before? If you stopped right now and examined your life, would you be able to go, man, God really did answer some prayers. I don't know that I ever thought that I would be where I'm at right now. I don't know that I ever thought that I would have this family or this job or have a, a pastor this awesome. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, Braden, Braden showed up at Mission City Church about seven years ago, and I was the youth pastor here. And during that time, Braden showed up and was like, hey, uh, I got into some trouble, and uh, I'm needing to do some community service hours. And, and we said, yeah, absolutely, you can come here, and uh, we'll, we'll find something for you to do. Well, Braden, upon doing community service at Mission City Church, he not only fell in love with the church family, but he fell in love with Jesus. Amen. And because the Lord did a work in Braden's life, the Lord did a work in his brother's life. And then the Lord did a work in his best friend's life. And then the Lord did a work in his best friend's mom's life. And then the Lord did a work in his sister's life. And all of a sudden, all these people around Braden are getting saved following Jesus. And it's incredible. I, I think uh, within about six, seven months ago, uh, we, we celebrated. His brother got up here and played the drums um, right out of youth and is playing on stage with us here at Mission City Church. And if you didn't notice, this morning, Braden stood up here and got to lead worship with Mission City Worship this morning. Awesome. We were, we were standing in the back, and he goes, man, I don't think I ever would have dreamed in a million years that coming to Mission City Church the way that I did, that I would be on the stage worshiping the Lord. And, and you know, I, I just, I didn't want to let this morning and this moment pass without just celebrating and recognizing the milestones and the answered prayers that God does over our life. And so I wanted to pray over Braden this morning, but I also wanted to remind you, take pause every once in a while. And just begin to examine your life and your heart and look back at the prayers you've prayed over the years. And what has God done that you haven't stopped and given him enough glory for and praise for? And this morning, I wanted to stop and give, Lord, give the Lord the glory and the praise for the amazing work that he's done in Braden. And not only did he save him and redeem him, but he also gave him a gift that he's able to use to, to praise and worship the Lord here with our church. And you didn't hear him solo this morning, but I'll tell you what, this dude could be an American Idol, and instead, he's here using that voice and that gift to serve the Lord. And so would you lift your hands with me this morning and pray over Brayden? Lord, we just come before you today, and we thank you, Lord, as we look back for your love, God, we thank you for salvation. Lord, we thank you for the, the, the process of discipleship, God. I thank you for the walk of sanctification that you began uh, to, to do with Braden, Lord. I thank you that his heart has remained humble and open and following after you. And, and you can do what no one else can do. And I thank you that you've given him a gift that in, in all of the, the, the different things that have happened in his life, Lord, that maybe in a, a, a valley moment that you brought him to a place where you knew that you were going to speak into his life, that he would meet you here, that he would begin to serve and follow you here, and that he would today begin to use this gift to give back to you. As Cody said, it's out of a heart of gratitude that we begin to be generous. And I thank you that, that there is a heart of gratitude in Braden. I pray that you would continue to bless him and nourish that heart, Lord. We love you and we bless your name. It's in the name of Jesus we pray today. Amen. Thank you, Braden. 
Love you, bud. It's really awesome, you know, getting to, I've been here for seven years now, and getting to see the different stories and the different walks that, that the Lord has brought. And, and uh, man, this is a special place. And it is an honor to get to be a part of, of this body of believers. And, and I'm just so honored. Well, hey, this morning, I'm, I'm even more honored to get to introduce you to someone that I literally call family. Uh, my, my cousin called me uh, a couple of months ago and, and, and said, hey, we're going to be on the road. And, and uh, when, when I got to talking to him, I thought, man, what a blessing it will be to have you and your family here. This guy was one of the few voices that when uh, me and me and Natalie, uh, when when Natalie got pregnant and we were about to be parents, he was one of the few voices. Him and his wife April, greatest parents I've ever witnessed in my life. They were one of the few people that gave me a mentality about parenthood that it wasn't a burden. It wasn't just going to be hard, but it was going to be the greatest blessing that I would ever have in my life. And I'll tell you, uh, they're they're pouring into me and Natalie and, and that perspective and us getting to watch them. We got to go up to Tennessee and we rented a cabin with like 40 people. And, uh, and we all, me and Natalie, I'll tell you a funny story. Me and Natalie, me and Natalie, we were the bad influences. <laughs> we were the bad influences. We were playing Uno and I'm a little, I'm a little tiny, like a little bit competitive. Not much, but just a little bit. And, and uh, they were like, Pastor Josh is, I'm the bad influence. It was hilarious. And so I've learned and grown since then, girls. Thank you for pouring into my life. But uh, I, I'm super excited, man. Uh, Pastor Matt Jett is here with us this morning. And some of his, some of his kids, uh, just only four of the nine, are going to be here to bless us this morning. So get ready. The Lord has a word for you this morning. And more than that, I believe that he's going to bless you and give a word of impartation uh, as we get to uh, hear the word and worship together with the Jets. Would you help me give a warm Mission City Church welcome to Pastor Matt Jett this morning? Thank you. Thank you and good morning. Man, I am super excited. Uh, I've just been going through all kinds of memories like the ones that Pastor Josh just listed. And uh, uh, we, we also had a little lesson this morning. Pastor Josh is my first cousin once removed, not my second cousin. So I'm glad I cleared that up. My kids are his second cousin. So if that makes, if you got that. All right, all right. So, uh, uh we're just loving being here in Florida. Uh, we've we've uh, enjoyed uh, over a week here, and uh, we've been hanging out. And I'm going to tell you about that in a little bit. But first of all, let me introduce a little bit of my family. My wife is here. The, uh, you want you stand up and say hello, baby. This is April. She is the mommy of all nine of them. We didn't cheat. No twins. No adoptions. One at a time. And uh, uh, she doesn't age. I age. One of these days, someone's going to come up and ask me about my oldest daughter, and I'm popping right in the mouth. But uh, that's how it goes. Thank you, Jesus. So we've, we're, you're going to get to meet some of the rest of them. But we call our, our ministry is called Jet Connect. And uh, before you leave today, get, get outside and uh, connect with us. We've got a lot of social media, and I'm not always comfortable with that word, but that's what it is. Just we, we do some podcasts and some blogs we do. A lot of things, and uh, um, we have some T-shirts and stuff out there. Meet my kids. Um, in fact, I didn't say this this morning, but the, the this whole conversation uh, came from one of the many conversations that I have with my children. We live very open. I, I, I used to be a professor of world missions, and uh, both in America and abroad. And uh, so my children are raised in house, and uh, I believe that is my greatest calling. I believe it is our greatest calling as fathers to be fathers. We get that one right. And we'll pretty much change everything else. And I think that's why the enemy realizes if he stops that one, he can stop a lot of stuff. And so I believe no greater time in the history has the enemy been attacking fathers than right now. And uh, But it's about time that we just attack right back. Uh, no weapon formed against me going to prosper. Isn't that right? I have some weapons that he knows not of. They're not formed with carnal hands. They are supernatural weapons for the pulling down of strongholds. Worship is my weapon. 
Prayer is my weapon. It doesn't come from this side of the planet. It comes from that side. Come on now. So our ministry is called Jet Connect because we, we feel like everything is connecting. In fact, I'm reminded uh, as, as I was speaking this morning, I just I feel like preaching the whole Bible. I kind of feel like that old, if you ever heard that old country preacher, when he's preaching, he says, turn in your Bible to pretty much anywhere. I'll be along there directly. Because, uh, you know, it's connected. We, we jet connect. We, uh, the Lord is connecting the body of Christ, realigning some things. Have you gone to the chiropractor because you're hurting, your body's malaligned? I believe that God is realigning the body of Christ right now. The enemy wants to tell you a lot of other stuff. In fact, our message today is one of hope. He wants to get you focused on the waves. They don't like you focused on the Savior. You focus on the waves, you're going to sink, you see. So he reminds you, oh, this is bad. It's really, really bad. And guess what? He's right. But it ain't bigger. It's bad, but it ain't bigger. He said that. It is bad, but it ain't bigger. It's not bigger than my God. He doesn't tell you that second part. Well, well, how bad is it? Well, how big do you want the revival? It just got a little bigger. Woo, that means the revival just got a little bigger. See? It just got a little better. Oh, well, that means the revival just got a little bigger. See, somebody said, well, what about in America? Well, I'm so glad that people are getting involved. I want you to get involved. I want you to vote. Spiritual thing. It's not a political thing. I want you what you say. No, it's a spiritual thing, not a political thing. Is that you? Oh, come on now. I'm preaching your message here. I'm, a, you know. But I, I learned a long time ago. Here's the deal. You ready? Same thing that's always saved America is going to save us again. That's revival. Where does revival come from? It comes from my king. And he wasn't elected. And his term of office don't end in four years. And what he says goes. Well, he says goes. Okay. I know I'm, I'm with the right people today. I've, you know, I've felt it at two services this morning. You're just going to, I'm family already. I, Josh, Pastor Josh already said I'm family. So we're just, we already worship Jesus together. We're going to do this. And um, we're headed home to Tennessee here in just a little bit. But first, we stayed in, in, in Florida. We went to St. Augustine. St. Augustine is really cool. I don't know if you guys have been there. So, you know, uh, went to a fort. As a boy, the boy in me is like, that's the coolest. They had cannons. Come on, you know, weapons of mass destruction right there, these cannons. And the boys and I, we touched them. <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to. <laughs> For boys, man, we, you know, we do boy stuff. You know, Lord, uh, April said we, we had six girls, and then two boys came out. She's like, what do I do? I go, nothing. I just let them, let them go. <laughs> I mean, not totally, but you know what I'm saying. Let them be, they're, they're, they're a lot of fun. So uh, apparently this fort has been there for like 300, 400 years. It's never been defeated. That reminds me of somebody I know. You know what I'm saying? A uh, place where the first pastor ever served in America, right there. All kinds of cool stuff. But the big thing for me was the ocean. You ever do that? You ever sit on the ocean and just look and have this sense of awe, right? Uh, if, in, in Texas, if you want to go uh, get awe-inspired, you, you go to a place called Big Ben. And you stand outside the stars and you look up and they go forever. Have you ever been with your family on the campground and, you know, go outside the city, make a little fire and you're looking up at the moon and looking at the stars you're like, oh, this is, this is bigger than me. I'm just a little dot. You ever had that moment? Those are moments of awe. It turns out that moments of awe are necessary for humans to realize that God is bigger than your problems. Without a sense of awe, you never cry out for a greater power. So the enemy doesn't want you to think about stuff. He wants you to stay in the city. The city lacks awe. One of the biggest things you can do as a parent is get your kids out and let them see awe. In fact, uh, recently, we moved back to Tennessee. The Lord told us to go there and, and help some pastors, some friends of ours that we work on the mission field with. In fact, it's, a, it, it's, it's a, such a privilege as a daddy to get to go to the mission field. The um, last time that we went out to Honduras, uh, my children uh, did the um, interpreting in Spanish for us, which was really cool. And we're going to sing together in just a little bit, which as a daddy, there's nothing cooler than that. Get to sing praises of the King of Kings with, with people that I've made. I sometimes look on the stage, there's a lot of times there's a, a, at least five of them on there and keyboard, I'm like, I made that keyboard player, made that bass guitarist, 
my wife and I made that. She had she helped. My wife helped. She does. She she helps. She helps a lot. Actually, she does a lot of stuff. And uh, so the Lord said, uh, we've, been, we've been in some really hard places. We've, we've lived in China, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Honduras, all kinds of places. And the Lord told us uh, last, uh, two years ago to go up to the hills of Tennessee to Gatlinburg and serve him there. And I said, yes, God, I will go to Tennessee. <laughs> have you ever been to Sevierville, you know? How many have been there? Y'all know what I'm talking about, the Smoky Mountains. So we're looking at the Smoky Mountains. They're just gorgeous, and we see bear, and we... We saw all kinds of, you know, animals and just constantly these moments of awe. You can hardly ride around the town without just, wow, God, my king, my father made this, you know. So the enemy wants to take get rid of that. He wants us to not have moments of awe. Uh, in fact, one of my daughters was talking about the other, uh, Lewis the other day. Uh, I think it was out of, uh, uh, which book was it, baby? It was uh, the demon one. Yeah, screw tape letters, letters where he was saying, don't, don't let your guy think about anything. Don't, you know, the demon said, don't, don't let him think about spending time. Keep him occupied. Keep him busy, 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 busy. Look over here, look over here, look over here. Play with this game. Look at it on the phone. I mean, man, you ever seen, you know, those guys, they're walking out in public with their phone. They're in the Smoky Mountains. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying, I'm not lying, right? They're on the ocean. You know, walk into the waves. You're like, hey, dude, there's something going on. We have to start looking. Lewis says uh, uh, the best thing to keep a Christian from succeeding is don't let him think about the awesomeness of God. We have found, and in, in, even in, in, let me go ahead and put the scripture up real quick. The Romans, in the climate of uh, humanity, a sense of awe compels mankind to seek a higher power. Romans 1 and 20 says, Creation testifies of God's existence, leaving mankind without an excuse. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm reminded of uh, one of my favorite writers, uh, Bonhoeffer, who uh, I do a lot of reading during Christmas time of his, and uh, he says, we have a problem with uh, a lot of the theologians. Now, my wife and I, we had went to some extreme ends in education, and and I went, after we got to the top level fairly quickly, we were like, oh, this is the wrong way. And uh, uh, Bonhoeffer said this. He said, theologians make their mistake in the following. They think their job was to explain away the mystery when their job the whole time was to preserve it. There's a wonder there's a wonder of Christmas time. I don't understand the king of the universe, the maker of the universe coming and dying for me. Do you, get, do you understand that? You believe it, but the awe and the wonder, I, I, I want to see it face to face someday, you know. There's a mystery to it. I don't understand the virgin birth. I, I, I get it, but it, it, it's beyond me, and that's okay. It's necessary. So we found that even even. To a, an extreme end, the enemy would want to destroy entire cultures, like the nation of China. We lived there for a while, my wife and I did. And uh, while we were there, I'm just going to share one story today because I, I, I want to do some other things. So we, while we were there, we, we had the privilege of, of every week we would do one or two larger speeches other than teaching. We, we would teach English, which was great, and then we would do other things <laughs> and teach other things, you know, which was really, really cool. And uh, um, I love teaching about my favorite things. So while we're living there, the Lord gave us the opportunity um, to speak to uh, a, a bunch of scientists. And these uh, uh, guys were um, teachers of teachers, a teacher's uh, system where you had these teachers' uh, school. All of them were teachers, science teachers. And so we were there, it was about four or 500 very, very young folks. And uh, um, so I started off my little lecture there because I've always loved creation science because of what Peter said, right? And uh, so I started off my lecture by uh, taking a watch off that I had bought at the uh, local market for about a buck. And I tore it apart and took a hammer and broke it all apart. And I put it in this bag. And I put some firecrackers, Chinese firecrackers, and pow, 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 pow. And I poured it out. And it was worse. It was now, like, broken even more. And there's smoke and fire and whatever else. So I, Scooped it back together, put it back in the bag, and put some more firecrackers. Pow, 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 pow. This time it caught on fire. 
you know, right there in the classroom. I put the fire out, and all the uh, scientists were like, Lasha, Funsia, Funsia, the teacher, he's crazy. He's, he's crazy. He said, what are you trying to do? And I said, I'm trying to put this watch together. I, I, I put all the parts and pieces that it needs. I'm even going to cheat a little bit and give it everything it needs right here. I'm not even going to make it create, but then I'm going to the explosion to, to put the watch together. And, and, and they said, well, that's crazy, teacher. Explosions don't put things together. They destroy stuff. So I started writing on the board, and about three or four hours later, I had written everything from uh, um, different laws, uh, thermodynamics and law of order to disorder, and human eyeball, just the, the beauty of it and uh, um, how certain things cannot possibly evolve in, 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 in certain situations. And this morning, if, if you go look it up, there's, there's a wonderful um, story that I actually recently learned about dolphins and, and, and other creatures who can use sonar. And you've got three different things, one that's a vocal production, producing the, the sound. And then you've got to have a, a, a receiver either in the ear or the brain. And then you've got to have a brain that can transmit those sounds that's made. So all three of these things have to evolve accidentally. That's, that's just a high order, you know, for, for something. And, you know, at the end, what was interesting, so when I started this speech, uh, one of the uh, teachers um, jumped up right before I started and, and said, Mr. Jett, we, we don't understand why you guys are so superstitious in America. You, you, you have so many advances, techno technological advances, and yet you're, you believe in a God. And I said, well, let me go ahead and speak a little bit and see how you feel towards the end. And uh, uh, so we did. That's good. I can't believe that just evolved into something so good accidentally with that explosion, you know. And um, so after the, after the study, I, I, I did the following. I said, look, I, I've written on the board literally hundreds of laws that are broken to try to believe this. I said, you, you have to break this law, and you know this law that you even yourself said that you don't believe that an explosion is creating anything. We, and you have to break this law, and you have to break this law, and you have to break this law. And I said, and yet you choose to believe it. So I said, I salute you for your great faith in something so unbelievable. And I looked right at that lady, <laughs> you know, and um, she jumped up and she said, well, let me tell you this first. So I, I opened up the Bible to Genesis. I said, let me, let, let me just tell you a little bit about what I believe. I said, Genesis, you can look at it as a science textbook, but I, I really don't even have to do that. I just want to get one thing out of Genesis. Genesis is purposeful, purposeful. God made you on purpose. You are not an accident. Oh, does the world need to hear that today? Child of God, you were formed in his palm. He knew exactly what body he put you in. Come on, somebody. He didn't accidentally put you in the wrong body. He had plans for you before you were one day old. Before you were one day old, he knew exactly, and he still has plans for you. What if I've done this? It will come to him right now. Jump on board right now. I said, I, said, I said, Genesis tells us one thing. You are not an accident. All the world needs to hear that today. You are not an accident. Your father loves you. He has a plan for you. And that lady stood up at the end of the speech, and she said, Mr. Jett, I've never been allowed to hear this. So we are communists here. We are Marxists. She goes, now I see why you could believe in a God that you do. And later that night, about midnight, she found my wife and I in the dark, towards our home and asked us how she could become a Christian like us. It's very sweet. Here's the, here's the reason why I told that story. It's an older story. We've got tons of stories, but when we get back to a sense of awe, back to where this is, go ahead and put that next scripture up there. I want to go ahead and read that. So that's the one. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from where my help comes from. My help cometh from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Now, how many of you have seen this scripture before? How many of you noticed until just now, though, like I did when I was studying this, that last tag is so important. One of the ways that I know that my help comes from the Lord is because I know he created this whole thing. And if the enemy tries to break that down and tries to break down the family, he's just trying to break down the foundations of stuff. Because if he breaks down the foundations, then he knows the building's going to crumble. 
So he wants to remove that in all cultures and societies, and ours is no, exa- uh, no excuse. But we have a king that is bigger. Girls, why don't you go ahead and start making your web and get things together. I can't really speak about revival unless I speak about John the Baptist. Most of our podcasts, most of our speeches are on family and the hearts of the fathers turn it back to the children, turn it back to the fathers. And then some of our deals, we, we, I go over some recipes in the Bible for a great number of things. And one of my favorite recipes is, is the recipe for strength. How many of you have found, especially in the past few years, uh, there are times when we have been a little tired, a little weak. But in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. And you've had to ask him, God, I need some strength. How many of you have asked God for strength? All, everybody, okay, good. So I told you we're family. We're the same. We're the same. And he gave us this. He said, here's the deal. The joy of the Lord is my strength. What kind of joy? Getting a new car kind of joy? It's a very specific joy, isn't it? The joy of the Lord is my strength. My favorite basketball team won kind of joy. No, no, the joy of the Lord. Well, okay, well, where do we get this joy of the Lord? Does anybody know? It says, in his presence there is joy. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Oh, that's the kind of joy that we're talking about right there. In his presence. So, so all I got to do is get the king of the universe to, to come down. Well, that should be easy, right? Actually, it is. He says this. I dwell. I make the living room. So he said, I abide in the praises of my people. So my point on that little recipe, I said that recipe, I said another one, is that if you need strength, you need the presence of Jesus because in his presence there is joy and in the joy there is strength. How do you get it? Turn that, that praise and worship on. In your home, where do you need that peace? Is it in your home that you need? Well, turn it on in your home. Turn it on the office. Turn it in your cubicle. Turn it on in your car and the way you're going. You need some peace. You need to turn that on. Do you understand? Well, there's a little recipe for revival, I believe. And I'm going to get Maria to say something here in just a second. But John the Baptist, Luke 1, 15 through 17. You also find this in Malachi 4, but I'm just going to read the Luke one. For he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And we turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people of the Lord prepared. Revival for John the Baptist, ultimately, I think a lot of people said, even when uh, some of the revival that we, we, we went to Asbury, the girls went to Asbury, and she's going to talk about that just a little bit. But there, there's a little controversy. I don't know, you could have controversy with a revival, but whatever. So they went to find and just be with and spend some time with the Lord and other people who were chasing the Lord. And um, there's a lot of people, well, you, 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 revival is not revival until we see the lost being saved. Well, the lost are, are, are dead right now. You know, uh, revival is for for us, there's, there's something that has to happen in verse. So there's this verse right here. It says this. John the Baptist first had revival. You want revival for your city, your nation? Revival starts with who? You. Uh, you, you must have been taught with Pastor Josh. He's been teaching. It's not, in fact, I did watch the other day. He, he had said, you know, you, if, you've, if you're trying to make God to be an accommodating God in your own image, God ain't going to put in your, we, we have a song the girls and I like to sing. It's kind of funny. It's uh, our God is an accommodating God. He accommodates. No, 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 our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Yeah, all right? See, there's a difference. We flip that. So however he wants to do revival, that's how I want to do revival. That's how, it, amen? So in this, he says he changes the heart. Then the next it says, and he changes the church. It says that the people of the Lord come to know him. And then it says the changes in the family, the fathers to the children, the children back to the fathers. And then it says, after all that, then I will call the disobedient to wisdom of the just. You want revival in our land? Let it start in your own heart. Let it creep into your own church, into your own family, and then we'll see it. But it starts with us, church. It starts with this. Amen? This is where revival starts. As I go back here to get ready for them, let me let me let me close with this. 
No, Pastor Josh tells the truth here. You have a great pastor. Um, in this day and age, man, in this day and age where we have a lot of folks doing a lot of things and they're going to stay, I'm going to crank it. Um, How many of you would go up to a, a doctor when you're coughing and sick and that doctor would tell you, um, I don't judge here. I don't, I don't give, you know, I don't diagnose people. We, we're a family of coughers. If you go into the lobby, you'll find a lot of other people coughing just like you. And we're a community of coughers. How many of you like that doctor? No, we would fire that doctor and we would go somewhere else, right? Wouldn't you? Where the doctor says, oh, I know exactly why you have that cough. Here's what you need to take for it to get rid of it. And I'm going to teach you how to not get it again. And you can go out into our lobby and talk to the other fellows that have been delivered from that. But see, the world says, I don't want no judgment. Well, I need some diagnosis. I mean, maybe you don't like the word, but I need a diagnostic. I need a pastor to tell me the truth. Doc, it hurts when I do that. Well, stop doing that. Oh, it feels better already. Right? Um, so here's the thing. We're going to leave you with a couple of songs. They tell the story. It's not just a, a God releasing us from the grave, but the fact that our Redeemer lives. Um, we have an awe. I don't understand the mystery to it. But I am awestruck. I watched those waves in, in St. Augustine there at the beach with amazement for hours, thinking of how small I was but how big my king is. Um, while he's helping her set up, um, I don't know if you can hear me, but um, about a year ago, I guess now, we just passed the anniversary of it. Um, my siblings and I, we'd been living, uh, newly living in Tennessee for just a little while. And um, we heard that just a little, one state over in Kentucky, um, Asbury was having a revival. And um, we jumped in our car and just ran, dro drove to see where uh, we heard that people were meeting with God. And I've, you know, all my life I've heard people just begging for revival, crying out for revival, generations before me praying for revival. And it always sounded really hard to me. I didn't understand it. And, it's, and, I, and I prayed for it. I wanted it. I knew that we needed it. And um, the devil's really smart when he lies. He usually tells you a little bit of truth in it. And it is a beyond you. It is bigger than you. But it is not impossible. And that's, that is something I learned when we, as soon as we pulled up, there were a community of people that all they wanted to do was just see the face of God, touch the face of God. It wasn't about them. It wasn't about the person next to them. It was about how can we see God? How can we touch the face of God? And it's a wonderful verse that I believe was mentioned earlier, um, draw near to the Lord and he will draw, draw near to you. And that's what we did. All we did was come together and draw near to God. And that was when revival started because the Lord loves to draw near to us. It is not impossible. It is bigger than me. It was um, beyond me. It was wonderful and beautiful, but it was not impossible. And um, I just, I love it. It changed my relationship with the Lord. It really did. And uh, we can have that again today. The Lord has not stopped drawing near to you just because the revival at Asbury came to a close and the doors closed and we went home does not mean that revival stopped or ended or the possibility is beyond us now. Check, check, check. Thank you so much. Hello. <laughs> um, my, my ears are kind of going crazy. I don't know if anyone else. No. Kind of cutting uh, in Maria's our little theologian, by the way. Um, so she starts a lot of these conversations, even that one that I, that I spoke on this morning on all. I said I have a lot of fun with them. What do you need, babe? I don't know. It keeps cutting in and out, so maybe I'll just take them out or something. Uh, I'd like to give Nate a lot of thanks today. He's been doing awesome today. This is a hard thing to go from two places. So. Come and take my name. Oh, love is my redeemer. Let's
Now, as Paul said, if our God wasn't the God of the living, 
would give all men most miserable. You agree with that? My God is the God of the living, so because he ain't in the grave, I ain't going to be in the grave. Job says this, Job 19, verse 25 through 27 says, I know that my Redeemer, my Redeemer lives. And on that last day, he will stand on this earth. And though my body has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see God. I will see him with my own eyes. How my heart yearns for that day. There's a mystery to it. My decayed body, somehow, with these eyeballs, not somebody else's, I will see him. I don't understand it. When I was over in Israel years ago, and I'm on the Mount of uh, Olives, and they said there's a uh, fault line that goes right through this mountain and goes through the eastern gate, and I said, of course there is. My God did that long ago in preparation for this. Yo sé que vive mi Redentor, yo sé que vive mi Redentor, la creación declarada, viva mi proclama, yo sé que vive mi Is that awesome? Were y'all blessed this morning?
I was over here, I don't know, I was like, the last time we, we went to the mountains in Tennessee and they all sang and, and did this stuff and, and I was like just tearing up and I was like, man, why, why am I tearing up? And the same thing's happening over here and I, I feel like getting to see a, a picture of discipleship, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful, isn't it? And I was just, uh, I was so encouraged this morning, um, even that word on, on having a sense of awe and, and being awed by God and his, and his goodness. And, and uh, man, I just pray that you are blessed this morning. Um, if you need prayer for any area of your life, our prayer teams are coming up to the front. We'd love the opportunity to pray with you this morning, but I'd love to just say a prayer over us as a congregation this morning and, and just uh, thank uh, the Jet family for coming to bless us. So if you, would, uh, if you would join me in prayer. Father, we just come before you this morning. We thank you for this time that we have had together as the body of Christ. And, and Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to bring uh, my cousin and his family uh, to come here and to minister and to bless Mission City Church. I pray that the word and the worship, uh, Lord, that it, it leaves a mark on our hearts this morning to, to remember the all that it is of who you are, God, that you're so good and you're so big and as Maria said, yet so simple. I thank you that Jesus came and, and he gave us all of the commands and he said in just these two, all of the law and the prophets hang on them, love one another, love people and love me. And all of the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. And Father, I pray that we would be a church body that holds that to our hearts. Lord, that we will be all struck by the simplicity of let us love you, Lord, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and like it, love our neighbor as ourself. I pray that you would bless uh, the Jet family and I pray that you would be with us as we go throughout this week. Let us be a light wherever we go, Father, that we would be able to share of the goodness of you, Jesus. We love you. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Church, if you need prayer for any area of your life, the altars are open. We love y'all. God bless you, and thank you for coming. We'll see you again next Sunday.